Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Atari Hacker Show. In this week, we're going to do something pretty fun with Mark. We're going to do basically a very, very cheap version of Shark Tank, where each of us went on Flippa and found a site that has been for sale and is going to try to convince the other to invest our business money into that project. So throughout this podcast, it's not just going to be random bantering between Mark and I, you actually are going to be discovering how we would vet an existing website, what we'd be looking at. And that's something that you can take away for yourself if you are looking at buying websites. So our hope is that it's going to be both fun and instructive for you to watch this episode. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Atari Hacker Podcast. So one of the episodes we did recently did really quite well and you guys seem to quite like it. And that's the one where we showed you how to find gold on Flippa. And a lot of people in the comment section asked us to vet sites that we would consider buying, not buying and kind of give our logic behind that. So in today's episode, we are going to try to do just that, but we try to make it a little bit more fun. So the idea here is that you guys know that Mark and I have been working together for more than 10 years now. So we tend to just talk very you know, in a very honest way with each other. And the goal here is going to be pitching the idea of buying a site on Flippa to the other one. So the mission we had for this episode was to go on Flippa, find a site that had already sold because I didn't want to fiddle with an existing auction or something like this. A lot of people don't like that when we do that. So we picked something that was done already, but recently. And essentially we each had to pick a project that we thought we'd pitch to the other one in terms of working on it, and we have to convince the other one to work on it. And that's going to be the game. Can you convince the other one or not? And also the other game is to ask Mark how it's going. So how's it going, Mark? It's going good. I've prepared a lot for this podcast, but I, again, I didn't prepare to answer the how's it going, Mark, <laughs> question. I just saw it right in the end there, and like the fear of God went through me. That, what it's am I going to say? It's kind of like say? the opposite of me then. So the things I have to say are I've changed my camera angle slightly, so it's like less kind of Instagram posery and more kind of flat. So let me guys yeah, know nobody, what you think. Nobody poses like that on Instagram. Thank you, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> like literally nobody takes the camera. I thought everyone did that in like some kind of duck face, you know, is, is that not the thing? Yeah, 10 years ago. Oh God, <laughs> showing my age now. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, it's not exactly like I'm big on Instagram, so I'm not going to pretend I'm telling you, uh, but you will see that I care a lot about Instagram in my, uh, in my website uh, pitch to you. Uh, I think you I think you would like that. Um, but yeah, we have changed our camera angle a little bit. So actually, I just got a standing desk as well. So my camera angle is like a bit low as well. So it doesn't look like I'm looking at the camera like this. Uh, and uh, yeah, it feels more natural, basically. Anyway, I, I'm sure nobody else noticed. But uh, <laughs> let's get started with the podcast because I think our cinematography advice, nobody came to the podcast for that. So go ahead and pitch me your idea. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your attention. The website I'm going to be pitching you today is winchmania.com. And if the name alone doesn't sound like a reason to buy it, then I don't know what is. This is a DR8 Thank you. site, which means uh -huh. DR is a representation of the number of links the site has, nothing more. It doesn't take into account on-page factors. So this tells you that it doesn't have that many links. However, it was started several years ago in September 2018. So it's relatively aged. You know, you'd think it would be out of the sandbox and all that by, by now. Uh, the selling price of the site is $42,000, and that's based on a uh, 20x multiple of the last 12 months revenue, which is around about $2,050. Now, over the last six months, that revenue is around 1950 and over the last three months, it's 1729 So essentially, as time has gone on a bit, the revenue has dipped ever so slightly, which, meant me, which means that uh, a multi, at a $42,000 valuation, that's a multiple of either 20, 21 and a half, or 24.3. So even taking the worst case scenario, 24.3, as a buyer, that's a pretty awesome deal. I mean, sites generally go for mid 30s into the uh, mid to high 40s even for, for really good ones. Um, so I'm not sure why this site is so cheap really. So you tend to, when you're buying assets like this, you make your money either by adding value later on or by getting them for a good deal. And this I think is a really good deal. 
Do you think you could buy it and just resell it for more like right away? Yes. All right. I absolutely do. Um, I, I think there's a lot of easy ways to to add value to it, and I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through them all. But first, I want to talk about winches because it's not something I knew very much about um, until I discovered I don't even winch, know the winch, world. winch mania. Okay, so a winch is a... It's kind of like a fishing rod, but it's an electric one, and instead of fish, you like take cars and like heavy shit out of ditches and stuff. Okay. It's what um, you use in Uncharted to pass the mud part in the video game to lift your car up, basically. I haven't played it, but let's go with that. You should. All right. So uh yeah, so that is that is a winch. Now I I don't know too much about uh the winch niche or winches in, in general, but I kind of like I, I'm not sure even sure how to describe it, but these kind of like outdoorsy product based kind of niches um, because there there tends to be not so much competition in them everyone wants to do reviews of iPhones and fancy stuff but uh, I just feel like internet marketers don't really understand um, I don't want to say manual labor type, the real type world. stuff but yeah <laughs> really, really like out, outdoorsy stuff I know there's plenty of uh, like camping sites and, and, and whatnot but yeah. but these kinds of things uh, tend tend these kind of niches tend to have um, lower competition so I looked at I looked um, it at winches in Google Trends and it's a relatively flat throughout the year um, trend Google Trends shows you uh, shows you interest over time. Uh, and this can help you see if there's kind of seasonality in a niche, which is important, especially when you're looking at the numbers, because it could go some way to explain the recent dip. Uh, and what I actually noticed was that sort of towards the second half of the year, there 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 is a bit of a decline in um, it, it's very subtle. It's not not like it would be in you know golf or something, but it's there. So that could that could have a, a an impact on things. And also this year especially because of COVID and everything that's gone on there, it's really messed up a lot of these these trends. So you want to take, there's a setting on Google Trends where if you look at five years, or you can go back even further if you want. And if you look at sort of 2019 and before, it will give you a better idea, I think, of, of the winch niche of what's going on. Uh, always put in a few product names into this. Don't just put in winches because that's like an informational keyword. And this website which is an affiliate website is going to be um more focused on product based keywords um so yeah that's that that's kind of the seasonality of it my first impressions when going to the site are it's basic but it has it's like basic plus so I, i've seen I, i'm curious to hear the plus i've seen thousands you know, let me let me qualify that <laughs> i've seen thousands of of like thin, shitty, basic affiliate websites. Uh, it's quite common that the, the homepage is just like a blog feed and uh, you know they don't, they don't put much effort into branding or, or anything like that. And at first glance, you might think, oh, well, this is just one, one of those. But there is just, it just has like this something else. Uh, maybe it's like the, the logo or the basic color scheme. <laughs> Good argument. It's, 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 it's something it, maybe, else. Maybe it's the 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 featured images, which are decent, coherent, um, nicely branded. Uh, it it just looks like someone's put like a little bit more uh, uh, TLC into this, basically. So I also looked at the about page, and there's no info there whatsoever. Uh, maybe I'm just yes. Maybe I'm just being being biased here, but rather than seeing these things as a problem, I see opportunity. Uh, as as a buyer, at least, um, and the main thing is, despite all of this, it's working. Like the site is ranking really well for a ton of keywords, not just in the in the winch niche, but in for like car tires and ATVs and batteries and 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 things like that. You know, expensive products which probably have like decent commissions in them, because most products, at least on Amazon, they they pay you a, a percentage, a small percentage at that. Of, of the sales price. If you're selling a $700 winch or some of these go for you know thousands of dollars, then you can really make a lot of commissions from that with, with little traffic. Uh, is there other affiliate programs than Amazon or do you have to like, 
is Amazon the default? So the on the flip a listing, the guy has uh, the seller. It's, it's actually a broker that's selling it. Um, Funny brokerage business, actually. They they get you on as a broker and then they just stick it on Flippa and, and sell it. For a shitty multiple. Yeah. yeah right. I'm not, not, not quite sure. <laughs> what's terrible broker, to be Not honest. quite sure what's going on there, but um, yeah. that's that, I'm not that, impressed. That sort of happened. Uh, one thing I really liked, actually, was in the seller's notes. Normally, these are like bullshit. You know, I'll just build some links, do some on-page, and it'll be, be great. They've actually put some like really... Um, Mm-hmm. like specific things. And one of them um, was, he mentioned there's another affiliate program. Uh, it's just US based, but then again, so is most of most of their traffic. Um, he said that uh, there would be an opportunity or the next buyer he recommends to try that out and, and, and test it. He said he hasn't done it. Oh, it's only monetized so far by uh, Amazon and they actually have Azoic ads on there as well. They don't have the traffic numbers to, uh, I think it's at like... Uh, it's definitely less than 30,000 a month, so they can't get on yeah, yeah. Uh, Media Vine or um, Ad Thrive, which, you know, there's some debate around this, but um, I think Tend they're better networks. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, win- Winch Niche, uh, pretty good uh, in terms of the product. It's also low competition, like ultra low. Like this, this might only be, be the only Winch site online. And usually that's a bad thing because it means there's not much money to be made or no money to be made. Uh, but in this case, uh, I think there there actually is. I mean, what we know he's he's making like two thousand bucks a month, give or take. Um, yeah. What what we don't have is the split between uh, the content on his site, and he has almost two hundred pages on here. The split between which yeah, content, yeah. tire content, and other car review content. Um, so I'd be really interested to see like how how much of the Amazon revenue is made up of winch sales, and how much is made up of uh, of of other stuff basically. Um, but either way, it's it's like a good opportunity to to branch into ATVs, to tires, and there's just so many keywords and so many options with with those things. Um, and importantly, he's actually ranking in some cases number one for like AT like. What was what was it? Uh, Tao Tao ATV review. He's number one. Um, that's okay. like a it's like a Chinese ATV. Um, and the only other there's one other person that's done a review of it. Then there's a few kind of best top ten review type sites which have done like pretty shitty reviews. And then there's someone else on like a forum that did a, a review of it. So really, there's like little competition in in for a lot of these keywords now. There's also not a huge amount of traffic for each of them, uh, but because he's he's written almost 200 articles, um, it's it's quite sort of spread out, which is also a good thing as a buyer because you're not don't have all your eggs in one basket. You're not relying on you know one or two pages to bring you all the traffic. Um, it's it's quite um, diversified in 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 that sense. So let's have a look at some of the content. Uh, the first one I wanted to look at is. Uh, Rug cell winch review. Uh, uh-huh. This this is uh, it's just like a, one of his standard winch winch reviews. I think this is one of the earlier pieces of content uh, they did on the site. Uh, so it, if you scroll to the bottom of the, the front page, you have the the blog roll and there's like pages at the bottom. So if you go to like the last page, which I think is page sixteen, you'll see the the content which was published uh, first. And that tends to be the worst content they have because people get better at content over time, usually. Uh, so I, I had a look at some of the earlier stuff, and this rug cell winch review was was one of those articles. It's let's say like fairly it's, standard for an affiliate uh, uh, article. It's not amazing. Let, no. let's, let's not let's not get <laughs> what me wrong. What would you say if a writer gave us this? So this is this is because we've been having this this debate lately about about quality. Um, how good there's how how good is it objectively versus all other affiliate reviews in different niches? And then there's how good does it need to be in this case? And yeah. I think they have a good mix here of this is like easyish to write. Like they're not reinventing the wheel here. Um, they're they're kind of rewriting the Amazon product descriptions. 
Uh, but they're doing it in a smart way and they are adding value to it. So for example, uh, with winches, uh, apparently you want to get a winch which is rated uh, 1.5 times the amount of load you want to carry on it. So this uh, th- this winch, uh, the rug cell one's capable of towing uh, 13,500 pounds, but he says you probably only want to use this up to about 9,000 pounds to get the best results. Otherwise, you know, you might break it or Okay, so there's some whatever. interesting facts in there. Yeah, yeah. So it... I wouldn't be too quick to just like say have a have a look at a few sentences and say oh it's thin shitty affiliate content not adding value it is and and that's that's what I like about this site is they've done the basics and then they've just gone that little extra mile in a few cases in a few in a few places to show me that they've they put some like care and thought and love into into the site which a lot of people a lot of sites you can just you call don't it see. love at this level. Yeah, I, I can. <laughs> okay. I, I think, right. I, I don't know because it's obviously a broker being set selling it, but I try to get a build up a picture in my mind of who is this person selling it. So I think it's someone's first site. Uh, I think mm-hmm. this yeah. is this is maybe their baby and they've, they've kind of taken it as far as they can. Maybe they decided to cash in and sell it. And uh, maybe they've already started new projects or got, got other things on, on the go. I'm, I'm not sure. But because it's like their own site and it's not, they're not just like churning it out or doing a quick flip, like they've actually put some love here and they're into it. And it's, it's kind of built, there's some elements which are built with the long term in, in mind. Um, so I, I like that. I'm looking as well at the uh, Tao Tao ATV review, uh, which follows the exact same format. These are very like, cookie cutter affiliate reviews you know you got the intro uh product box with the description and the pros and cons they probably watch tas or you know some s- job. similar um a piece of content they got the buying review at, at at the end um and yeah it just works it's the ranking number one even they're ranking really well in a lot of the product uh review keywords but they're also ranking like number three and four for the product name itself like below the manufacturer and like the Amazon page and maybe another retailer or something. Yeah, uh, this is low competition then. It tells it, you it's very low. It's very low competition, <laughs> but it also tells me that because they're doing this for ATVs, that Google is thinking, okay, this site is actually, it's not just a, a winch site, but it's relevant to, it has, it has uh, ATV relevancy. Uh, it has mm-hmm. car tire relevancy. And... Because that association is there, it should be easy to build on, on, on that and start just reviewing a hell of a lot more. I mean, there's loads of car tires and um, similar car products, batteries, things like that, that, uh, that you could potentially review in a, a similar way. And there's just not that much competition. I know there are a few car sites out there and they've, they've definitely targeted like lower competition keywords here, like across the board. So I'd say they've done a pretty good job of keyword research, to be honest, as well. Um, often you see with people's brand new sites, you know, they, they'll have some low competition and some super high competition that they've no chance, uh, uh of ranking for, you know, years. Uh, so I, I just, I, I like it. I, I really do. Um, the site has a lot of the, it, they've done a lot of the basics, right. And the building blocks are there for someone who knows what they want to do. Uh, and knows how to do things to come along and optimize it, improve it, rewrite some of the content, and and really sort of take it to the next level. Uh, I was having a look at the link profile. Okay. I was having a look at the link profile as well. Um, so at the time it was sold, there was about 200 links. That doesn't necessarily mean that they've built 200 themselves. Uh, far from it. You, if you look at Ahrefs or any keyword tool, there's a lot of just. I don't know, even know what to call them, but like yeah. scra- scraper sites that will like coupon sites, yeah, other, coupon yeah. sites, keyword tool sites. Um, from like I don't know what kind of keyword tools they, they, these are, but they, they scrape every site and make a public index of it and it, it counts as a link for you. I so don't they think- do that on purpose to sell their keyword tool, right? Yeah. So, like, they basically hope that you will find them in Ahrefs, you go on their site yeah. and like, take oh, oh, a great that? keyword tool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like and you buy it, right? You, it's you kind of like find them in analytics. arguably one of the best keyword tools on, on there and then go and buy probably one of the worst ones one, yeah. through that. That's, I'm not, I'm not sure charity. about business model, but <laughs> they, either way, they, they keep doing it. So someone must be, be buying it, right? Yeah, I hope. 
so I was looking, I was looking at the links, and you're not buying this site for the the links it, it already has, right? It's uh, it was dr. What did I say? Eight or nine? Dr. Eight. Uh, so you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too concerned with this. I'm just looking at the links which seem to have been built uh, manually. How were they built? And mm-hmm. I'm looking at the intelligent car driver link, which is dr. Thirty three, um, and I can't tell if this is a natural link or a link that they've uh, like a, a skyscraper or one that they've like paid for later to to add in, and that's a, that's a good sign because if, if I can't tell, well, then there's, this is this is skyscraper. That well, I, can tell, I, I I thought that at first because of the the uh, content the formatting. Uh, the, the formatting. But if you look further down the article, yeah, the they have all the same, these yeah. these other things. I think the site just generally has very bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Type, typography is that what you call it yes uh yes. Y- yeah uh so I, I looked at another one which was uh muscle cars zoned and this seems like a similar like most like i'd say 90 percent. this is this is a bot link um there's a little uh uh video it's not available anymore where there's like a yeah. truck driver driving down a difficult road uh and then at the end it says at last check out this epic truck loading fail or this winch accessory checklist. <laughs> it do, doesn't make Whichever sense. You want. Doesn't make exactly. sense to have that winch accessory checklist in there, really. But you know, I, I know how I know how this works. I know how like the site's probably selling links and stuff. It's That's fine. fine. I don't have a problem yeah, with. Whatever. I don't have a problem with that. Um, it, you know, it it happens. It works. So I think this has been done in a not amazing way, but not a bad way. They haven't just gone out and like been total um, idiots about like uh, the way they insert their links. And this is emphasized even further. I found a blog comment that they did earlier on from a carfromjapan.com article. Um, and they've they've just posted a blog comment and uh, had Winchmania as the, the URL. But it's not just a, oh, thank you for your article, great to read like generic blog comment that that you get spammed to death for. They've actually written uh just a couple sentences, but it's like a custom comment and uh asked a few questions and you know, done it in a in a good way. I'm not saying this works at all. Uh I'm not saying it works in 2018. I'm not saying blog comment works in 2021. It's no follow link, but Again, this is just showing me like one part of the picture I'm building up by the mindset and the the ethos of the guy or the or the girl who built this site. And it, it says Joshua is the, the person's name, so definitely a guy. Um, it says James Avery, I found. No, no, it says Joshua Mir- Miller. Okay, I have some posts that says James Avery oh. as the author. Okay. Well, maybe there, uh, maybe there's multiple people, or maybe they're just using fake names. Pro- probably. Uh-huh. I found a guy on Quora actually, uh, and asking questions about winches, uh, but I couldn't okay. find his social media profiles. It says he lives in New York City, uh, etc. I don't know. It's uh, that's it cool like though. Like, I mean, profile. who, who, if if you're. Who goes out of their way to you need, write? Who, write who something uses on winches Quora? in New York City? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> who, no, but who, who goes? Who goes Where out, do you live? Which area? <laughs> who goes out of their way to write something good that's going to be allowed on on Quora? Like someone who gives a shit about their site, right? Uh, yeah, I, it's not like there's a lot of random stuff, you know, random questions in there, not just about winches. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, let's so, see. I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure it's the same guy, but yeah, it, it's interesting. So, uh, it, go ahead. Like all, all these things, though, like it, it reminds me of um, that that old story. I think it was like ACDC or something. They would they would have this uh, the, this list of things that they had to have set up before their concert, and they would ask for a bowl of M and M's, but you had to like take the green ones out. And if they, but a lot of people thought, oh, they're just being a rock band and you know being assholes. But actually, they were like, well. How how closely did they pay attention to our requirements list? Because if there's green M and M's in there, they maybe they've missed some like safety stuff for the rigging for the stage and and all that stuff. Um, so you know you can build up a, a picture of the, the the person 
or the the event in, in this case by like one one small or a few small examples like this. So if you just look at you know a few links, a few pieces of content here and there, you can start to build up a build up a picture here. And I I like whoever uh, built this this site. It's giving me a lot of uh, confidence um, as a as a potential buyer. If we so how much is it for selling for? Forty two thousand. Forty two thousand dollars. Yeah. You would pay forty two thousand dollars for a DR eight site. A DR eight site that makes two thousand dollars a month. Uh huh. Uh, and like, um, how much would it cost to just rebuild the same site but better? Uh, I'll get to that one sec. I want to uh, talk about the. I want to talk about the existing SEO. So. Uh, Go ahead. They they rank for a bunch of winch terms like winch accessories. Only number four though. Uh, uh, as I said, like Tao Tao ATV review is 13, but they still get quite a lot of traffic from it. Uh, the competition in there is only really coming from like forums and there's a few YouTube videos. But there's no one really targeting a lot of the, the keywords and that's that's why uh, the site's doing, I'd say relatively well. Um, there's one uh, Badland winch review. They're number six at the moment and looking at who's above them and what it would take to get to number one. It's a couple of YouTube videos. The Amazon product page, uh, which is something we're seeing more and more of recently, is uh, even for affiliate review of review type keywords, um, Amazon are actually ranking with their best winches page or, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how many people are actually clicking through there because certainly when I'm looking for a product, uh, I don't want to necessarily go to Amazon to tell me what the best product is because I don't think that's organized quite 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 so well on their site. Um, I would I would tend to look for third third parties um, there. But the the site which is number one uh, for that keyword is only DR18. So very beatable. Yeah. I, I think getting the site to DR34 it would be be very easy. Importantly as well, it's mostly US based traffic that they have. Uh, which That's makes good. makes sense because yeah, there's a lot of kind of like outdoorsy people doing stuff with winches there. I mean, much more, much more winches than winches you know. in the US, for sure. But really, I mean, <laughs> much more, much more. I don't know anyone with a winch here. Is that UK, is that right? racist? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I just Americans. wanted to uh, get ah. some. I just wanted to get some YouTube comments. That's all. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Um, Go ahead. Okay, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> mostly, yeah, mostly US based traffic. I ran the site through Google's PageSpeed Insights and it scores 71, which is yellow. Uh, it's yeah. acceptable. They're not going to be getting right. penalized for this. Um, it's a very simple, basic site. So there's there's not too much like coding and probably not have any plugins, not, not much going on. So you'd expect it to be relatively fast um, as it is. I looked up, uh, there used to be a really good site called whoishostingthis.com. Uh, but they got acquired by digital.com, which is like a best web hosting type affiliate site. Um, anyway, if you search for who's hosting this, you'll find the page on there and you can put in any website and it'll tell you which web host they're using. And they're using WPX hosting, which is a pretty good host, I would say. Um, yeah, not, they're running uh, they're running on Generate Press as well, actually. I'm not sure I if I see. would I'm not sure if I would bother switching to Cloudways or something. They, though nah. Though we have seen some pretty good results, like just anecdotally, like for a handful of sites that we've we've switched over to to Cloudways. So I, I don't know. Um, the, the, maybe if the site grows, it's a not bit just more, Cloudways. It's just it. also just it's passing core vitals in general, right? It's like you no. can't just say, "Oh, this this host is the reason why these sites went up." Uh, I, uh, you're right. I, you're right. And th there is a few things which the site is which Winchmania is not doing so well, particularly around like images and. Um, uh, that kind of stuff. So maybe I'd look into, or I'd tell you to look into that kind of stuff because you know that's more your your area, not mine. Um, yeah, he makes some mistakes. That, uh, like, I oh, know it's fine actually. Never mind. But uh, he runs on Generate Press. Um, so the 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 core of the site is quite easy to optimize. Uh, WPX plus Generate Press for a site this size is about right. I think I wouldn't change anything to be honest. I would maybe just put some proper CDN on top or something. Yeah, that's it. Monetization wise, low competition means low ceiling, unfortunately, at least for winches. But uh, we've, he's already proven that he can, that the site can rank for ATV and tire type keywords as well. Uh, and the ceiling is just much, much bigger there. Um, so that's a very good sign, very big opportunity. 
Uh, it's monetized by Amazon and Azoic at the moment. Um, as I said, it's too, too low traffic for Mediavine or AdThrive. So that's something you could potentially add um, in future. There's also some really under-optimized Amazon stuff. So none of the images link to uh, Amazon. Uh, there's no links either in the intros or in the outros. Like the call to actions on his reviews yeah. are read these other reviews. And there's like three links to to, to those. Um, so I would say, you know, changing a few things like that, you could probably get some, some um, quick wins. There's no... Uh, uh, what's it called? The um, geo targeting with your, your IP to like Amazon.co.uk or yeah, other but he gets mostly US traffic, right? He does, but there is some UK and Australia and Canada and and these kind of places uh, as well. In my mind, okay. I have I have an idea that Canada Canada is a big winch country. Um, <laughs> if you're Canadian, post a comment in the YouTube video below and tell me um, if I'm, I'm not sure. I'd be right very happy to be to to be put together with Americans, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a big country, lots of outdoors, <laughs> probably lots of cars and stuff getting stuck in ditches and stuff, or I, I don't know. Um, uh -huh. Anyway, I can't, I can't, whatever, any, anyway I don't think it's going to, it's not going to hurt the site. And for the amount of time it takes to set up Amazon One Link, I think it's a no brainer. You probably add 10, 15% to revenue there immediately, mm -hmm. you know? Um, my post acquisition plan um, would be, I, I definitely think we, we should buy it for 42K. Um, and here's why. If, you, if we started link building today, I think in six to 12 months, we get that to DR40 um, yeah, pretty, agree, pretty easily agree. with a mix of guest posting, Skyscraper and, and Harrow um, and maybe one or two other creative things as well. Um, I think I would also immediately redesign the homepage um, not because I think it's necessarily like a terrible thing, but just, I found that when you are doing link building, if you have a, a nice homepage that people like feel like is a, a, a real site and maybe get some, yeah. maybe one of the writers could ask them if they would put their like uh, photo on there, or, you know, act as the persona of the site or, or whatever, it, it, that tends to make it a little bit easier to, to find, to acquire links, especially in something like Harrow. I don't think too many uh, people would would be so keen to link to a blog roll yeah. kind of homepage like that, especially if it's full, full of uh, reviews. Um, One thing I like to do with the homepage, I just want to say, is like, so if you check like the test site, so if you even check Autori Hacker, for example, I like to put like, you know, you kind of want a headline for your site, but I like to put a statement that everyone agrees with. Like you want 99% of people to be like, oh, that's great. So it's like, you know, helping you build better sites. Uh, on the tech hacker is like build profitable sites or something like this. Um, but like if you check all our other sites, it's kind of similar. Um, and usually just getting the, it's kind of like this subtle, like uh, this uh, unconscious thing of getting people to say yes, you know. Um, and um, and it, and I think it works quite well as well. Like people like these homepages where it's like they read this and like, oh yeah, this is good. And it's like you have this kind of like mission people are excited about. And uh, and it gives a purpose pretty much. And people like usually your homepage is the second page people visit on your domain, so they land on the content page, then they click on your logo, and they land on the homepage. And it just it's here to contextualize what the whole site is about, and like what you're about. So I think it's not so hard to do that on this site. I would I would also start producing more content quite quickly. It's it's clear that this is this is a kind of uh, you need a lot of content for a site like this because targeting lower tiny keywords co right? competition keywords um so i may think about using something like jarvis uh, ai not to just write out nonsense and, and post it but yeah. have like a, a writer kind of do some research and manage the process and maybe use that to to output articles like fast um, and they don't have to be like the best in the world but when there's no or hardly any competition um it, it's about getting it done rather than being being the best because you know whatever you do is going to be the best almost um that's, that's not strictly speaking true because there are like non-car sites that mention it or you know forums and stuff r ranking there so i wouldn't be spouting out just utter nonsense but yeah there, there could be an opportunity there as well something we've been playing around with um quite a lot lately with uh, some interesting results we have more content to share about that um over the coming months no doubt um in terms of on page SEO, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of uh, opportunities with something like Surfer. 
Um, although you want to be careful because a lot of these keywords are the ranking number one. So, and if if they're number three, then maybe it's just the the actual product which is above it. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're selecting which articles you want to optimize. You want to make sure that there's beatable competition above you. Uh, so anything kind of uh, lower page one, top of page two, um, should be should be good. Um, there's going to be a lot of long tail keywords um, on this site um, as well. So I would uh, I would definitely pay attention to the, um, the on the right hand side when you use Surfer the uh, keyword suggestions that it um, says you should you should include there so you get that kind of like long tail reach as well. Um, I'd add internal links. He does have quite a few of those um, at the at the end of each post, so that's that's good. But I didn't see too many throughout the um, the content, so there's maybe like a, an audit of that. Um, and then, yeah, uh, some light core web vital stuff. I mean, when you go like too extreme um, on it as well. Uh, I think okay. I think in terms of money, um, buy this for forty two thousand dollars. Invest ten to fifteen thousand dollars over a twelve month period, and I would expect this to be um, reaching in the sort of mid to high five figures within. Uh, sorry, four figures within uh, twelve months. So. Based on uh, the current like super cheap discounted valuation, I think that you're right what you said earlier, you could buy it and then sell it almost immediately and make a profit on it. I would actually buy it, uh, invest 10, 15K, and then see where we're at in, in 12 months time. And I would expect to be getting a sort of 35X multiple for it at that time. And if you're making seven and a half K a month, you're looking at a quarter of a million dollar, um, even more, um, Valuation, so you know you're really like there's a lot of potential um, in here. That very much depends on you sort of nailing a lot of ATV, car tire, car battery type keywords. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's um, a huge amount of uh, headroom in the winch space, but I, I don't think it matters too much. I think this is a this is a slam dunk. Um, it's definitely something um, I would be uh, interested in in purchasing, to be honest, and. You know, you asked earlier, wouldn't it be easier just to rebuild it? Yeah, I think it would be, it would be cheaper just to rebuild it. I think that's it's doable. But I think you're looking at, you know, a year, um, eighteen months minimum to get to 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 kind of roughly where they are. I, it would it would to be get a bit different. Sandbox. It would be a bit different because I think we'd push link building harder earlier on. So maybe we'd get further in some areas, but there's just that initial, the, the, the first six months, 12 months in some cases are just slow on a new site. And it's, it's, it's a kind of sandbox factor. You, you have to accept that. So what you're paying for is a, a site that's built relatively well, which has a lot of opportunity and you're paying to bypass that time more than anything. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. And it's not, it's not, the multiple is not crazy. So I think it's, Fair. I'm not sure I would be the most excited about that uh, that's that project, but I can see how it does make sense. Uh, I think just also getting more traffic and getting onto a more premium ad network might pay up more as well. Like it's an easy jump yeah. uh, in revenue. Okay, it's funny because uh, I, one thing I want to say though is like the links are all complete garbage. Like I think uh, don't even treat like this site has any link because um, like DR8, uh, I think, or something. And really, like, everything, I, I was really digging the links and I couldn't find anything of value in there. Nothing that we could not beat in, like, two weeks, you know, with a brand I, new domain. I, I agree. There's nothing amazing. But also the manual link, links that have been built, they're not, like, super shit, like, spammy stuff. They're, like, yeah, they're, but they're, they're low, 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 low value. They're, they're average to slightly below average outreach style links and nothing more. Yeah, they, I don't think they matter that much, to be honest. I think it's just the niche is that easy. Yeah. Um, the problem with that kind of site as well is like once people uh, pick it up, it's like it's quite easy to lose your keywords when you're this low DR as well. So it's like, yeah, be a bit careful on that. Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, anything you want to finish on, like anything else you want to talk about or you're done. Do, do you agree with me? Should we should we buy it? I don't, I don't like the idea of paying 40 grand for a DR8 site. I really don't like it. Um, especially when we've seen the results we get from building sites on expired domains and how much faster it goes. Like you still get like that six months period or something, but it is much faster when you build like on an older domain as well. So it's like, 
I, I mean, it's fine. It's I think in this niche, it's fine. But if it was in something slightly more competitive, I would really hesitate because as soon as your competitors find your keywords and you're really low DR like that, you're massively exposed and people just snag your rankings and the value drops like a fucking stone, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Um, so it's like you, you, you're just buying something that's extremely vulnerable when you're buying in this position and you're still putting 40 grand in it that would probably build you two or three sites like that if you were building. Uh, so it's like... It, it kind of depends on like how much time you have, etc. Should right, we move on so to the next one? About, yeah, yeah, I was gonna go for that. So my site is pretty much the exact opposite of yours, uh, and it is a, a fashion site. Um, so I know that you were very excited about Instagram and everything in the intro. Well, we are gonna talk about Instagram uh, in this review, and we're gonna go a little bit beyond the the basic. Uh, affiliate site archetype that we've seen with your example, which is definitely our bread and butter. And like, you know, it's, it's safe. Like we know that model. This one is like a little bit less safe. So it is actually, the site is pennypincherfashion.com. It's an 11 years old domain with a DR38. Uh, it has links from allure.com, Washington Post, CBS, Lifehacker, Glamour, and many, many, you know, tier two fashion blogs, etc. cetera. Um, essentially, you know, the girl that was running that site was running it as like an influencer, kind of like, you know, how most influencers now really focus on Instagram, don't really bother having a blog, you know, especially they just put the links in the stories and poof, you swipe up and then there's an affiliate link there or there's sponsored stories, right? So she does that a lot. And if you check her earnings, you will see that it really ping pongs between like making like 1.5K some months and making 7K the other months, et cetera. And that's because she did a lot of like sponsored posts, sponsored stories, et cetera. And she does a little bit of affiliate marketing, but given how her posts look, so like you can see I put this link for like best mid lens shorts for the summer or something. Uh, these posts are like made to be like shared on social media. They're really not optimized. For uh, for SEO, right? So she ranks for pretty much nothing. The whole site gets 1.8k traffic on Ahrefs, despite the fact that it has all these quality links, despite the fact that it is this old, etc. Uh, so really, really bad job on the SEO side. Uh, but that's that's the opportunity for me actually. That it it is that it has this quality. This uh, has this has this EAT that people want, right? Yeah. It's like this girl like has these photos. She was really into that. She has these big sites linking to her, to her, etc. And she has a lot of credibility gathered to that site. Uh, and that is to me that's the links that you can build. You know, reaching out for a guest post. You know, like it's not the same. Like, but if you do your guest posting on top of that, I believe there's like it. You can really quite kill it in SEO, um, and that the overall the domain is underused. One thing that I have found as well that was quite interesting is the affiliate program that she mostly uses, which is this shopstylecollective.com, and uh, from what I've read on the internet, because they don't advertise publicly. Some commissions on some brands, which, you know, there's big brands, like you can, you know, you can become an H&M and Macy's and everything and get paid basically, which is nice. Um, pay up to 15 to 20% commissions. I would imagine the bigger brands don't pay that. Um, but, you know, you probably beat Amazon for the average one. Uh, I, I would guess. If someone is in the CFA program, let me know. But uh, given what's been advertised, they seem to be making more than you would be making with Amazon, which is always a nice thing. Uh, when you're building size to not have to rely on Amazon only. Um, and that was quite interesting. And also being able to promote big brands is like, makes it easy. And also uh, she does a lot of these sponsored posts, sponsored social media posts, et cetera. And that's where a lot of her revenue comes in. And she's also in some exclusive affiliate programs. When you buy the site, you buy all of that. You buy the social profiles with the follower, uh, which have like decent engagement. Like some of her photos on Instagram have like over a thousand likes, et cetera. Um, you buy access to all these affiliate programs, you buy access, you buy this kind of like demand for sponsored posts, et cetera. Uh, and you buy all that credibility basically, which I think if someone's like good at SEO is like, uh, uh, it's the stuff that's hard to get as an SEO person. And that's why I quite value it. Um, I didn't talk about money, but, um, the site, as I said, makes the, the revenue ping pongs a lot, right? It's like some months it's like 1.7 K some months it's like 7 K again, because it's social media based. Uh, and the, the price that was asked for it was $40,000 as well. So actually quite similar to your site. 
Um, but uh, I think if you stop posting these sponsored stories, etc., that she has deals for, your revenue kind of tanks. Like you're probably making like five, six hundred bucks from affiliate, and that's it. Um, so that that revenue is like conditional on you keeping the work up, whereas your site was more on the passive side, right? It's just ranking on Google, and then it's just gonna keep making money. So it's uh, this is the drawback of that. Like it, you get much better metrics, but you get that. The other drawback is that the fashion niche itself is quite competitive, right? It is, and it's like a lot of like keywords. Like if you like, you know, I was trying to be smart when I was doing a bit of keyword research for it. I was trying to look for like, you know, fancy hats, names and stuff like that. I was trying to go like quite deep into like something quite specific. I was going into like specific fedora hats and stuff like that, but still, most of the search stuff was dominated by uh, e-commerce. Like you would just Google any keyword and you would just land on like e-com and then that's it. So, I mean, it's I an think, opportunity for I think that's because with, with fashion, there's you don't really need reviews of something. It's just whether you no. look at it and like it. It's, like it's different. It, yeah. It's different. It's different. Like it's, it's something that it's a lead niche you kind of have to learn as you get in. But still, I found some good competitors that were like pure blogs that have like you know, 10 times the traffic Ahrefs report. So I found this classy and trendy, a trendy.com and I found this mychicobsession.com. So I found these two sites and I looked at their keywords, right? And I was looking at what they go for. So for example, uh, one of the biggest page on one of these is like how to make a capsule wardrobe. It's kind of like this concept in fashion on like just having a few items that match all with each other so you can make lots of permutation. There was like how to wear a kimono, black, black skirt outfit ideas, that kind of stuff. So it's more like, on the informational side, but you can probably still make decent money, like having a nice photo of like someone wearing that skirt and then people click and then buy it basically because they buy on seeing things, right? Um, so it is quite competitive. So DR38 is great, but at the same time, you will need to be a little bit uh, smart on on how you pick your keywords and a lot of these keywords that you would want would probably require an e-commerce, but it doesn't mean you can do an e-commerce eventually if you really want to. Um, so that's basically what you get. And in my opinion, the value of that site is you get the stuff that's hard to get. The drawback of that site is that if you stop all the social shit, probably your revenue drops quite significantly. So in my opinion, if we were to take over that site, I would actually hire a person to be the new face of the site. Maybe even fly that person or the ex-owner to like take photos together to do this handover or whatever. Uh, because if you read the blog, she really like treats it like a personal blog uh, pretty much. And I would just do that. And also I would take over the relationships with the brands, et cetera. So I could keep selling these sponsored stories, et cetera. I'd keep the revenue going basically. And even if I'm breaking even, right? Even if I'm paying the person as much as it's making today, my goal is actually to then take over the blog part, which is massively underutilized, like 1.8K traffic for these kind of links, et cetera. Grow that hopefully to the level of the competitors that have about 10 times more traffic. And then make money with obviously with ads because there's a lot of info content in there, so you need ads. These are affiliate programs that pay quite well, but also use that traffic to build up the social following um, of my brand while, uh, you know, from the organic traffic, right? So just like put a call to action for us on Instagram, da, 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 et cetera. And the goal is eventually when you reach these higher following numbers, and if you keep posting content, et cetera, you can start charging more for the sponsored stories as well and it's kind of like start hiking your rates. And, and basically go up on that and kind of have these things ping pong where like you get more legitimacy, so you get better links, so your SEO goes higher, so you get more followers, so you charge more, so you get more legitimacy, et cetera, et cetera. And kind of like building that circle um, to do that basically. Um, I would also use like, she has a lot of social uh, following and I would use that social following to go beyond fashion in terms of recommendation. And in this niche, I tell you, the money is in recommending weight loss products. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I mean, you see it, right? It's like if you go on Instagram, like every influencer is like, oh, I'll buy this tea and, and then you lose weight or something. And it's like, um, that's where a lot of the money is as well. And this hasn't been touched as well. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be super scammy stuff like diet pills. There are like, you know, m healthy meal delivery uh, companies. Workout plans good. Yeah, as yeah. well. Like, like, you know, workout plans is not, it's like, you'll definitely get a tone body if you work out more like that. Not a lie, you know? So it's like, you know, do it with, do it with some ethics, but like, um, there is, you know, you can touch on all these things. You can even touch on like 
because it's it's really like a following based thing. Like you can even touch on like financial stuff, beauty stuff as well. Like teeth whitening pays a lot, for example, for affiliate, and a lot of other things that you could be mentioning and you could be monetizing the audience quite significantly on the social uh, on social media, basically. So that is an interesting project that mixes both SEO and like things that we don't tend to do uh, normally, which is all this social stuff, etc. But we also know that this social stuff, et cetera, is what opens the door, the doors to things that we wish we could have on some projects, but we don't have because we don't do it. And having a massive leg up on that project and having all of that um, starting followership, starting links, starting cred uh, credentials, et cetera, I think it's something for people who are good at SEO worth spending on because you know the rest is not so hard for us to do, like the content, the links, optimizing that stuff, et cetera. I so, um, disagree. Um, uh, you're right with with what you said, but I think the the question is: Is this the best opportunity um, for yeah, someone like us? You know, have a few websites um, which are more kind of like on the f traditional affiliate end uh, end of the spectrum to kind of go in and like figure out all this stuff, or does it make more sense to you know plug in uh, uh, an existing site such as Winchmania, which falls in directly <laughs> in this model and we just plug and play all our existing processes people like and just press go and it's like it's figured out with this i think you and i would need to spend considerable amount of time we need to spend some time figuring yeah. stuff out i also but, think there's a, a big risk with this site in that there's probably a lot of the revenue is directly tied to relationships that the the seller has and there's not too much mention about handover process and period and 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 things like that. So I would that that worries me a little bit. Uh, I think I would do that deals undercover. We can pass on these relationships, obviously. Otherwise, I think it's like you lose a lot of that value. The, a lot of that value is like getting these doors opened on day one that are very hard to get in. Otherwise, uh, it's I think still, the other it's risk with this project to know whether that's actually going to come to fruition until you you go through it though. Yeah, but I think the SEO the SEO opportunity is quite high though. Like the SEO opportunity and the Pinterest opportunity as well. I think she has like a decent Pinterest profile. Like there's like a few million views per month on it. Um, I think on Pinterest you can drive a lot of traffic if you do things properly as well. Um, so and then it's kind of like you need to build that like visual content creation pipeline where you know you make some pins, but also they'll be posted as posts on Instagram and all that stuff as well. So you kind of need to build that up. Um, but I, I like the assets. I think the assets are it's a, the the fact of getting the high DR domain with the links that are impossible to buy almost, plus getting the social profiles enough to you know convince people to work with you, work on relationship. Also do trades for links as well, I believe. Like um like if you have an Instagram with like 45k followers or something that it has, um you can literally reach out to people and be like, hey, I'll share your blog if you link to me or if you let me guest post, et cetera. Like there's opportunities to like for that SEO growth basically. And I think that the SEO growth is is alone can cover the, the value of the project. But I agree it's something a little bit more uh you know out there, a little bit more different. But for people who are really concerned about all that EAT stuff and really want legitimate businesses. Uh, I think it's an opportunity for these people who really are sensitive to that and 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 have that vision of like where SEO is going, because you're buying so you're buying legitimacy for not too high of a price to be honest. Yeah, uh, you're, you're getting a good discount guys, on you know. the on the legitimacy as you as, as you put it uh, in this in this sale. Uh, but it's I still think it's a lot of work to turn that around. It's a lot of you work. You have to rebuild the business essentially. No, because you maintain what is there already, but you need to hire someone that would take care of that. I have the person in mind personally, so it's like uh, one of my friends is like very, uh, very into Instagram. I actually pinged her for that podcast. And I was like, oh, if I bought this site, would you take this over? And like, uh, could I just pay you to take care of the Instagram and social? She's like, yeah, etc. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, I think it can be, I think it can be done. Um, and then you could just find someone that would be the face of this and uh, and pay that. I do think, yeah, I agree, it's work. But I think if you care about that, let's build something legitimate so that we're like more algorithm update proof, et cetera. And you care about building that stability, it might be worth the work. And I think it's good value if that's the direction you want to take. That's my opinion. Even if, but if you're looking for the quickest buck, yeah, I think it's not the quickest buck. Yeah, which man is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. About that. We should. You know what we should do? I mean, it's never going to happen. But we should have a GoFundMe for like both projects, and uh, we see which one gets more money. You know. <laughs> or we should just buy e not. each buy 
buy them and then come do another podcast in a year and see see who makes the most progress they're sold already so yeah. it's like we can't do that actually uh but maybe we should da- do that one day we should do like a v mark versus gail yeah. two case studies one <laughs> that i think i think if we want to grow our youtube i think that would work quite well uh anyway i think that was the podcast um let us know in the comments on youtube which one you would go for so like just go on youtube Go and check, uh, I mean, go in the comment section below the video, drop us a like as well, subscribe, all that stuff, you know how it works. Uh, you, we've talked about this enough. And tell us which project you would actually vote for, which one you would put your money behind, uh, which one's the safest and which one's the fastest money, I guess. Uh, I, we were really interested in your opinions. I really wanted to t- pick something that's quite different from yours so that we can have that bit of a debate here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this format as well. Let us know if you enjoy that format. If you are asked to do more like Mark versus Girl on like projects and real life sites, etc., because it's kind of fun to do. And I think it brings some freshness to the podcast. Uh, any final words of wisdom, Mark, since uh, your house going Mark was disappointing at best? No. Thanks for putting me on the spot again. Yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll try to do better next week. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's how we get the comments on YouTube, you know, that's how it works. Um, Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, uh, and see you in two weeks for the next podcast episode. Have a good week. Bye.